The race is on to find the automotive fuel of the future. With gasoline prices already well above $3 a gallon and a recession expected over the summer, many Americans are looking for new ways around the high prices. Whether it's by public transportation, walking, or riding a bike, more fuel-friendly or fuel-free alternatives are being used for America's daily commute. However, the search for a long-term solution to the high price and political ramifications of imported oil is making many scientists ask, do we even need gasoline to run our cars? In Iceland, the first steps toward an oil-free economy are well underway at Icelandic New Energy, a company geared to making Iceland a so-called hydrogen economy. When we started our path in Iceland, the government of Iceland wanted to create a hydrogen economy. And we, we realized early on that the only way to understand uh, all the implication of a hydrogen economy would be to build a commercial station. Up to 2003, everybody had built stations in like industrial complexes, in bus depots and etc. Not fully accessible to the public. The public was asking, is the hydrogen dangerous? Is that why you're building it in the industrial areas and etc.? So we realized we want just to take the hydrogen filling station directly out to the public. And we asked the, the, the developers of those technologies, is there any issues with having a commercial station? And there were none. This is the world's first public hydrogen station. It was opened on 24th of April 2003. And there was no other public station that came online until uh, last year, in, in, sorry, in 2005. And uh, that's, that was a station actually in Washington, D.C. There are now two stations also in Berlin, which are public, and they're building the first one in, in Japan, and there will be some stations in L LA which will be public. But this is like, we were the first, now people realize we can do it. However, skeptics argue that the large-scale use of hydrogen is impossible with today's technology. With hydrogen, there's no infrastructure for hydrogen. We can't mine it out of the ground, we have to create it. Uh, there's no way to store the hydrogen. The uh, the efficiency of creating hydrogen from electricity is still at a very low, uh, the efficiency is way too too low to, to make it practical. So, um, the so the, uh, hyd the hydrogen bullet, if you wish, is not silver at all. It's pretty tarnished. <laughs> Dr. Lee Lin seeks the solution to our fuel crisis from a much more abundant source here in the U.S., agriculture. My name is Lee Lind. Uh, I am a uh, professor of engineering and also adjunct professor of biology at Dartmouth. And I have a few other appointments. But one significant involvement in addition is uh, I'm co-founder and chief science officer for Mascoma Corporation. And since I was a junior in high, in, no, not high school, since I was a junior in college, um, I have been interested in producing liquid, renewable liquid fuels from plant matter, photosynthesis, if you will, in general, but most particularly cellulosic biomass. The byproduct that Lind hopes to derive from this photosynthesis ethanol isn't new to science or even the automotive industry. When Henry Ford was designing his first generation cars uh, back at the turn of the last century, he envisioned in fact that ethanol uh, uh, would be the fuel. In a word, the, the home run we're pursuing is having microorganisms directly convert the cellulosic biomass into ethanol without having to add enzymes. And it might not sound that that's uh, that uh, earth-changing, but when you get into the details, it is. We've developed over, over literally millennia uh, microorganisms that are fantastically good at ethanol production. And with modern tools, we can envision developing microorganisms that are similarly fantastically good at producing other fuels. But when I talk about cellulosic ethanol, I'm talking about a potentially a, a solution that I see as having, uh, being a candidate for the indefinite future, not just a transition strategy. Lind admits that making this process economically viable could take several years. In the meantime, scientists are trying to connect our cars to a more established fuel source, our already extensive electric grid. One of the big implications when you go from um, a, uh, a liquid fuel uh, uh, energy source to a um, uh, using electricity from the grid uh, is that the cost of energy goes from 250 a gallon to an equivalent of 70 cents a gallon. 
In other words, it's much cheaper to run on electricity on the grid. 90% of the energy used on the, on the uh, annual basis uh, in a plug-in hybrid comes from electricity. Most of its emissions is uh, the emissions of the power plant. But on a per mile basis, um, here in the state of California, that's like one quarter or less of the uh, emissions of a, uh, um, of a conventional car. I think about the future a lot. Uh, I think uh, what we see in the future is uh, uh, a shortage of oil because uh, we're going to hit the peak in the world production of oil. Uh, whether that peak occurs, uh, uh, some people say it has already occurred, or whether it occurs in five years or uh, perhaps the most optimistic of all is uh, that the peak will occur in 15 years. Even 15 years, it's already late for us to get started. So we've got to get alternative vehicles into our society as quickly as possible because when the, when the price of, of gasoline and when shortages start to occur, uh, we will have economic dis disruption like you cannot believe. And that's what worries me.